this is where we left off on Friday. Oh. Yeah, being able to see the equations would help. So we have one equation uh, for the drain current of the MOSFET uh, in the triode region. So recall that if I plot drain current versus drain to source voltage, I'm going to have something that looks like a linear increase and then that's gonna the increases the rate of increase is gonna taper off and after I get to some point my drain current is no longer gonna increase as I increase VDS okay so this section is the triode region And the section where my drain current doesn't increase as a function of VDS is saturation. And this curve corresponds to some gate to source voltage VGS that is greater than the threshold voltage VT. Okay, so if you plot this equation uh, under the limits of the trial region, so only up to uh, whatever VDS corresponds to the onset of saturation, this equation will give you this curve. And once I get into saturation, I'm going to use a different equation that does not contain any term uh, due to VDS because it's, it's not the value of that is not changing as VDS changes I can also write uh, these equations a little bit differently so I can write that as one half of uh, Kn prime times the width divided by the length multiplied by the quantity VGS minus, minus the threshold voltage squared and this is for some Kn prime that's equal to my electron mobility times my oxide capacitance so Kn prime is just substituting uh, for mobility times oxide capacitance. And this Kn prime is also known as the oops, the process transconductance parameter. I can also write this as one half uh, K sub N VGS minus VT quantity squared. And this means that K sub N is going to be the mobility times the oxide capacitance multiplied by the ratio of my gate width to gate length. And this has units of amps per volt squared. Actually, both of these do. Okay, this is now called, this K sub N is called the MOSFET transconductance parameter.
and they're just uh, there to help you simplify this equation but also it kind of tells you uh, what control you have over designing this MOSFET as a device designer, not a circuit designer. So uh, if you were in charge of, of making the MOSFET, right, uh, electron mobility is uh, not something that you can change. It's just material dependent. So if you choose to make your transistors out of silicon, you're stuck with electron mobility in silicon. That's not something that you can change uh, per each transistor on, on your circuit board. Uh, also, what is what was this oxide capacitance again? Remember what the equation for this is? Permittivity of the oxide. divided by the thickness of the oxide. So this is not capacitance, it's not uh, given in units of farads because we're, we're not uh, multiplying this by area. If this was a parallel plate capacitor equation, right, I need, I need area in the numerator too. So this is capac the units of this is capacitance per area. But the important thing to notice is that it's permittivity of the oxide now, if I'm going to make my circuit with some oxide, that means the oxide on all my transistors is going to be the same oxide. So I can't change this permittivity. Also, whenever I, I um, create that oxide uh, in my circuit, I'm going to have to create the same thickness of the oxide for all my devices. It's going to be very hard to make individual devices have a different thickness. So this oxide capacitance is also going to be the same for every single device on my circuit, no matter what the, the relative size of the MOSFET. Okay, so this process transconductance parameter is usually something that you don't uh, have control over as a circuit designer. You may have control over the gate width and the gate length, so if I can change those parameters, you can see that I can change what my, my drain current will be uh, for my transistor, assuming my threshold voltage stays the same and my VGS stays the same. Uh, but if you don't have control over that either, then you might as well represent that as this MOSFET transconductance parameter that already has width and length uh, within this parameter. So if you express it this way, now it looks like all you can change in order to change the, the drain current is going to be VGS. Threshold voltage is going to be something that's, that's given to you. And if you're not doing any uh, MOSFET design, this is going to be the only thing that, that you will be able to change in order to change the value of the drain current in saturation is going to be VGS. This is what you'll see in lab because you're not going to be making any new MOSFET, you're just going to be using a MOSFET that you have in lab. So if you want to design uh, your MOSFET to have a certain drain current and saturation, the only thing that you can adjust is going to be uh, VGS. Okay, uh, one other point about this slide is that I wrote down that these equations are for an n-channel MOSFET. Uh, I didn't really explain uh, what that is. So if we look at our transistor diagram, here's our source and our drain. Here's the oxide. And on top of that is my gate terminal. Um, Remember, we were creating a channel of free charges between the source and the drain that allowed current to flow between the drain and the source. And my semiconductor down here was uh, P-type silicon. And I uh, apply a voltage such that I get an inversion 
uh, near the surface of the semiconductor. So I have a lot of free negative charges near the surface of the semiconductor. That's the opposite of what should be happening in a p-type case, so it's inversion. Okay, so I have negative charges available to uh, move current between my drain and my source. So that's why it's an N channel. N is N is for our, our electrons. So this is an N channel MOSFET. So the only type of MOSFET we've talked about up until now is this N channel MOSFET. But later on, uh, you're going to see that we can do the same kind of thing, but just use positive charges. That will be a P channel MOSFET instead. Any questions on these equations? Okay, this is one of the more important slides, I think, in this lecture. We're going to be coming back to the, these equations again and again. Okay, let's uh, talk about uh, these equations again in terms of the uh, drain current versus VDS uh, chart of the transistor. Okay, so we're looking at our, our n-channel MOSFET again. Another way of writing n-channel MOSFET is to just write n-MOS. So here is our n-channel MOSFET. Remember that this is the gate terminal. This one with the arrow is the source terminal. And the other terminal, remaining terminal, is the drain terminal. Okay, to generate uh, the drain current curves that you see here, these, these different blue curves, uh, you're going to look at oops, drain current as you change the voltage between the drain and the source, VDS, and also as you change the voltage between the gate and the source, VGS. There's a couple of other things to note uh, here. And one is that I have current going into the drain, and I also have current coming out of the source. So the MOSFET is just acting like a, uh, um, like something that allows the current to flow through it, right? So the current is going to enter the drain and flow out through the source. And the value of the current coming out through the source is the exact same uh, value as the drain current. So this is one, this loop here is one circuit loop because I have the same current going through this loop. I have another loop in my circuit around here, but this would have some current going into the gate. And remember, the gate is a, is a metal electrode, but it's on top of an oxide, which is an insulator. So I don't have any DC current uh, going into the gate of my MOSFET. It's just like how you wouldn't have any, any DC current uh, going into a capacitor. So this current is zero. I still can have a voltage between the gate and the source, but I just have no current uh, entering the gate of my MOSFET. Okay, so given this circuit, we are going to look at how you get all these different uh, drain current versus VDS curves. Okay, so let's start uh, at the beginning. And we will first look at this condition where my uh, gate to source voltage is less than a threshold voltage. Sorry, I got rid of that circuit. So this is VGS. And here's VDS. 
Okay, and so I'm applying some gate to source voltage uh, less than my threshold voltage. Okay, I want to know then what is the value of my drain current. Okay, under this condition, I have not created that channel between the source and the drain, so I cannot get any current um, flowing between the drain and the source of my MOSFET. So I have no current. My, my drain current is going to be zero. This condition uh, corresponds to this drain current curve that I'm tracing over uh, with the red. So no matter what drain to source voltage I apply, because my gate to source voltage is less than the threshold voltage, my drain current is going to be zero. Okay, the, the MOSFET does not conduct any current through it. Okay, the next thing that we want to look at, uh, uh, and sorry, this, this particular uh, uh, situation of the, the MOSFET is, is cut off. Um, so I don't have any current flowing through it, or the transistor is like, it's like it's cut off from the circuit. Okay, um, the next thing to look at is going to be the triode region. Okay, so in order to be in the triode region of operation, that's uh, any part of the curve that falls within this gray shaded region on the uh, drain current versus VDS uh, graph. We need to satisfy two conditions at the same time. Okay, one of them is that we actually have a channel between the source and the drain of the MOSFET. So how do I get that? What, what's the condition that I need for that? This is giving me a... Uh, it's telling me what VGS needs to be. So I, I induce a channel by changing VGS. Just changing VDS by itself isn't going to do anything. So how do I make the channel? VGS has to be... has to be greater than or equal to my threshold voltage. Okay, that's one of the conditions I need to meet uh, in order for it to be in trial. <clears throat> so I have a channel between my source and the drain. I can now get some current to flow. So my drain current is going to be non-zero. Mm. So let's say I make my gate to source voltage equal to my threshold voltage plus one volt. That corresponds to this curve. Okay, so I could be anywhere on this curve, but I only want to be in the triode region. So I need to have a, another, I need to meet another condition at the same time. And that means that I uh, cannot be pinching off the channel at the drain side. My channel has to be continuous. In order for that to occur, my voltage from the gate of my transistor to the drain of my transistor has to be greater than or equal to the threshold voltage. Okay, so that's on this diagram down here. Uh, the voltage from the gate to the voltage at the drain. Here's the drain, here's the source, here's the gate. But we don't want to add another voltage in here because we already have VGS and VDS. I don't want to keep track of a third voltage. So 
In order to express this second condition, I'd rather just express it in terms of another voltage that I already have. So this voltage from the gate to the drain, if we um, go around this loop and do a KVL around that outer loop, you can write VGD is equal to negative VDS minus VGS. So it's equal to VGS minus VDS. Okay, so as long as VGS minus VDS is greater than or equal to my threshold voltage, uh, I satisfy the second condition. And if I satisfy condition one and condition two at the same time, that means that I'm on this part of the curve and that's within the trial region of operation. If I change v VGS to a different one, so I can make a, a higher VGS, and maybe I'm now on this part of the curve. As long as I still meet the second condition, that means I'm going to be tracing a different drain current curve. But as, lo as long as I meet conditions 1 and 2 at the same time, that means I'm somewhere along the curve within the trial region of operation, not uh, out into the saturation region. Any, any questions on this so far? Okay, let's look at some of the properties of the trial region. So here's our, our current equation again uh, that we had you know a few slides ago. This is going to describe current in the trial region. If we want to simplify this, uh, if we assume that uh, the drain to source voltage is really small, then we can neglect this squared term. And so uh, let's call this equation one. Equation one can be simplified uh, to equation two. And now this equation has some linear relationship between drain current and VDS. And so if you have a linear IV curve, that looks like a resistor. So we can say that under these conditions, our MOSFET is just acting like a resistor. But we can control the value of the resistance uh, by controlling the value of VGS. Let's look at the previous slide again. So we're restricting ourselves. We're still in the trout region, but we're looking at an even smaller subset of the trout region. So we're looking down at these voltages down here where the, the curve still looks linear. Okay, so for one VGS, I have this slope. For another VGS, I have this slope. If I keep on increasing VGS, I make this slope larger. So by changing VGS, I'm changing that resistance between the drain and the source uh, of the MOSFET. So I have a voltage controlled resistor if I only put a small voltage between the drain and the source. Then we can uh, write equations for what that value of the resistance is going to be. So we just take the VDS and divide by the drain current. This is the resulting equation. Um, and usually you take EGS minus VT and write that as uh, the overdrive voltage, V sub uh, OV. Okay, so this is going to tell you what that drain to source resistance will be. Uh, but all of this assumes VDS is less than equal to about 50 millivolts. So 
as you have to keep the drain to surface voltage small. Okay, so that's for triode. Uh, let's look at saturation now. So now we want to operate the MOSFET somewhere along these drain current curves, but in the blue shaded region that corresponds to saturation. Okay, so there's two conditions that we have to meet uh, in order to be in saturation. So one of them is that we have to have the channel there between the source and the drain. So what does that tell me? What does that tell me about uh, VGS? This is the same condition that we had, the first condition for triode. So in order to induce a channel, what's the relationship between VGS and VT? Greater than or equal to VT. If, if I don't meet this condition, then I'm in this cutoff and I just have no current through the MOSFET. Okay, so I have to have the channel and I also have to have a drain to source voltage that is large enough that I pinch off the channel at the drain side. So uh, this condition is going to be that VDS is greater than or equal to VGS minus VT. I have to meet uh, both of these conditions at the same time, and then that guarantees that I'm I'm going to be in the blue region of operation. So, for example, let's say VGS is VT plus uh, one volt. That means I'm on this curve, and if I satisfy these two conditions. Uh, that means VDS is, you know, relatively large. So I'm going to be somewhere on this part of the curve in saturation. If I increase VGS, so now let's say VGS is uh, VT plus one and a half volts instead of one volt, I'll be on this curve. And if I meet the second condition, I'll just be somewhere in the saturation region of that curve and so forth. <laughs> okay, um, so there's a there's a boundary here given by this dashed line between the trial region and the saturation region. And uh, that occurs because this is greater than or equal to. We have to have continuity between the triode and, and saturation current equations. So that occurs when VDS is equal to VGS minus VT. So if I substitute uh, this equation into my triode equation, because uh, right at this point, both my triode equation and my saturation equation are both going to be valid. So I'm going to get uh, I'm going to end up with this equation. And so I have some constant or some number times VDS squared. So that describes a parabola. So that's this dashed line here. And that will tell you where the edge is between uh, the trial and saturation regions on this graph. Um, another thing that uh, we can do 
is that uh, if we make the substitution for VDS and the tryout equation, I will end up with this equation, which is my saturation current equation. But you already know what that equation is. This is just how you would how you would get it. Or one half k sub n EGS minus VT squared. Okay, now notice in the saturation region, uh, my current stays constant as a function of VDS. But my current can increase if I change the value of VGS. So here's one, some uh, small value of VGS, here's a higher value, a next higher value, and so forth. So my saturation current can change, I just need to change VGS in order to change that current. So a more interesting plot maybe for saturation would be this graph where you plot drain current as a function of VGS, not VDS, because it's not going to change as a function of VDS. Okay, so I first start getting some current once I uh, uh, get to my threshold voltage at this point, and as I keep on increasing uh, VGS, I will keep on increasing my drain current. So that means that if I'm in saturation, I have a, a voltage controlled current. So if I want to model this, I can use this equivalent circuit model. This, this, uh, this is the equivalent circuit for a N-channel MOSFET transistor if it's in saturation. Okay, so I have my gate terminal here. My source terminal is this bottom node. And my drain terminal is up here. So as I change the voltage between the gate and the source, I will change the value of this dependent current source. And the value of the dependent current source is just my saturation current equation. So this particular form of this equivalent circuit should look kind of familiar. What, what does this look like? current amplifier. Uh, yeah, it does look like a current, sort of like a current amplifier, not quite. Because uh, current amplifier, I wanted current to actually come in to my, my amplifier, right? This one, this one, the input is an open circuit because I have, my gate current is zero, so it's an open circuit. So it looks like an amplifier model, but it looks like the, the transconductance amplifier. Okay, so this bottom circuit is showing our, our transconductance amplifier model. The top is our equivalent circuit for our MOSFET in saturation. So they look pretty similar. The uh, direction of the dependent current source is flipped, but that doesn't really matter. Um, for our transconductance amplifier, uh, what were the um, ideal values of the input resistance and output resistance? Maybe what is my what is my transconductance term? It's conductance, conductance. So, how do I get conductance? I out, O 
over VI. Because that's conductance, right? Uh, conductance is the reciprocal of resistance, and resistance is, is V over I. So my transconductance term is, is output current divided by uh, input voltage. Okay, so given that, I want to get my output current as high as possible and my input voltage as high as possible. Uh, what are my ideal values here? Uh, which one goes to infinity? Both. Okay, so my input resistance should go to infinity and my output resistance uh, should also go to infinity in the ideal transconductance amplifier. Okay, so let's look now back at our, our MOSFET equivalent circuit. What's my input resistance of this circuit? This one's infinity because I have nothing connected here, so that's infinity. And what is the output resistance? So if I, according to my transconductor amplifier model, that's this resistance here, right? But I have no resistor drawn there because it's infinity. So my MOSFET operating in saturation is a very good transconductance amplifier. Ideally. So it turns out that there is going to be uh, some output resistance. This approx this uh, is is um, valid to a good approximation. It does have a very high input resistance, um, but there's some finite output resistance for the uh, the MOSFET in saturation. The uh, physical reason for that is something uh, called channel length modulation. So remember, here's our source, here's our drain. This shaded gray region is the is the channel of free charges between the source and the drain. And we need to have, have it pinched off at the drain side in order to be in saturation. And then we said, okay, that doesn't change no matter how large a drain to source voltage you apply. Uh, it turns out that's not true. As you make the drain to source voltage larger and larger, the point of this channel pinch off starts to move back towards the source. Okay, so it used to be used to be at this point. As you make VDS larger, it moves back to this point. If I made VDS even larger, it would move back to some point around here. Okay, so I'm I'm changing the the uh, point at which uh, that pinch off occurs. And what that means is that it means that the output resistance of the MOSFET in saturation is not infinite. There's going to be some, some output resistance there. Um, so there used to be some gate length L. That was what you physically made the transistor to be. And as the uh, this channel length gets shorter, and that length is going to be L minus delta L, where delta L is the, the distance that the, the channel moves back in the drain. Okay, so if we plug that into our, our saturation current equation, we're just replacing any, we're replacing L here by L minus delta L. Do some algebra. And we're going to make a substitution where we say delta L is equal to uh, lambda prime times VDS. That substitution is on on this line. And lambda prime is just something that depends on the process, on, on how you physically make these transistors. Uh, then we'll make, to make this even more complicated, we'll make another substitution where you take lambda prime and divide that by L. And you will end up with Oops. This equation is 
Okay, what I've wrote so far is just the saturation current equation. This is the equation that we've written uh, up to this point for saturation current. So all of this is our, our normal saturation current equation. But you're going to add an additional term to this equation. So you're going to multiply the saturation current equation by 1 plus that factor lambda multiplied by the value of VDS. Okay, so this is the saturation current equation that includes the effect of channel length modulation. So this term is from channel length modulation. Okay, so what just happened here? I have my normal saturation current equation. If lambda goes to zero, then I, I get back to that original equation. But if lambda is some number, because, and that, that's gonna, just going to depend on the process used to make your transistor. That means that my drain current in saturation depends on my drain to source voltage once again. It's not as strong as the dependence in trial, but it still has, it, it's still going to depend upon that voltage. So that's going to change my uh, drain current versus VDS curve. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. Before uh, my saturation currents had a slope of zero. So they were completely horizontal in the saturation region. Now if I include the effect of channel length modulation, they're going to have some slope in the saturation region because of that 1 plus lambda VDS term that's attached to the end of the saturation equation. Okay, Since they have some slope, that corresponds to some uh, non uh, to some finite resistance, and this slope is going to be proportional to one over the output resistance of my op amp. I'm sorry, not op amp, my MOSFET. Um, if you also take all of these curves and extend the the slope all the way back. Uh, they all intersect the x-axis at some point. Uh, this point is called the early voltage. And it's just equal to negative, oh, or it's equal to 1 over lambda. So this is a way to experimentally measure what lambda is, uh, if you didn't know what it was. Just plot, take all these measurements and then trace the graphs back uh, to, to where they intersect the x-axis. But anyway, um, this means that I need to modify my equivalent circuit model. So I do need to have some output resistance in my model because of the effect of the channel length modulation. And I can quantify the value of that output resistance using these two equations. This uh, capital I sub D is just the saturation current equation without channel length modulation. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, the next thing I want to cover, um, I mentioned it a little while ago. So, so far we've looked at the N-channel MOSFET, or NMOS. But I can have the opposite case where I can create a channel that consists of free positive charges rather than free negative charges. So to do that, I first need to have an N-type silicon uh, as the base. 
And my, my source and drain are now made out of P-type silicon. And I need to reverse all the polarities of the voltage that I've been applying so far. But I can make it work just like uh, an N-channel MOSFET, except I'm carrying current with positive charges instead. So this is called a uh, P-channel MOSFET, or PMOS. Now, main characteristics of this type of transistor, same kind of operation as before, uh, except now the threshold voltage is going to be a negative value, not a positive value. The circuit symbols are also changing a bit. <clears throat> so the arrow is still on the source side, but now the arrow points into the transistor. And if you have the body terminal, this is what it looks like. If you connect the source and body together, this is a simplified uh, circuit schematic. Uh, I, you still can analyze uh, everything the same way, um, but now your current is going to come out of the drain. Your, your source current will still be the same as the drain current, but that's now going to go uh, into the source. So everything is just flipping around uh, from the NMOS case. Uh, I still need to have... Uh, I can look at the, the, the voltages in two different ways. I can say my voltage from my source to my gate now, not gate to source, has to be greater than the absolute value of a threshold voltage. So this sort of looks like uh, what I had for NMOS. Right, for NMOS, in order to uh, create the channel, I had VGS is greater than or equal to VT. If you want it to look like that form, you need to write VSG is greater than the absolute value of VT. Uh, or you can just think about it in the opposite term and just say, if VGS is less than, than or equal to VT, then I've induced the channel in the PMOS. And there's going to be different equations to describe current as well. Um, I'll go over that at the beginning of the next class.